So team, welcome. Welcome to the day one for the new QTP training batch of December 1st, 2011. Thank you for being here. And uh, here is the schedule for what we're going to do. Over the next 15 live webinars, the whole intent is to go through the most significant concepts of HP Quick Test Professional as a tool and provide you the much needed information on the various aspects of it. All right. So I typically don't start with the presentation in mind. However, I have a couple of few slides that I want to walk through because this is the most commonly asked questions. And then I want to also show you some of the video library content that I've built over a period of time. All right. So here is a short presentation team that I put together. Should not take more than three, four minutes. Primarily, uh, I'm trying to show you how can I give you an overview based on the top frequently asked questions. The number one is what is the core focus of this training? The core focus team, though I'm listing the topics here, the intent is how can it help you either in job search and interviews or implementing the concept of QTP as an automation testing tool at your project levels. All right. So even if you're a beginner, even if you're someone who's already working in the IT industry in the area of testing, or using QTP, this is a one course that fits all. The topic focus is VB scripting, because unless you know VB scripting, your knowledge is very superficial and you won't get recognized. But just VB scripting won't do. We need to know the concepts of descriptive programming, why and where to use, the foundation levels of object repository and so on. But most importantly, how do we apply all of these concepts into a project in our real life scenario? And that's done through various projects that I take in automation frameworks. So we plan, we design, we build and maintain these different types of frameworks from ground up. So you take the exact way you try and practice either on a uh, demo application that I show you or you do it on your own applications if you're in a project and that will be the focus. All right team, the next thing that comes to us is basically what are the prerequisites? So number one team, uh, the prerequisites is the fact that you need to have some amount of patience because it takes time to set things up, it takes time to follow the instructions, install the tool, make it work and get started. But once you get started, you will be able to flow with things. So while these sessions last 15 uh, live uh, webinars in about four weeks, depending on the amount of time you spend on the training, it can take you bit anywhere between one to two months to get to a really good mastering level on this tool. All right. The next one is uh, there are questions in terms of which is a chosen model. Is it the live or video? What I would recommend is to visit my website. You will see a live versus video link there and watch that overview. But typically it's the same content irrespective of you attend live or you do videos. The only primary difference is you are attending part of the whole training through this 15 live sessions. Okay, these 15 live webinars is a part of the whole course and you are attending the live sessions. You are trying to interact with me as the session goes on. All right. At the same time, these sessions also get recorded, hosted and you're provided access for either of the participations. Then once you sign up, once you confirm and join, you get a lot of things. But more, most importantly, you get something called as a group invite. You will be part of the thousand plus members in my QTP eLearn group where, uh, you know, there are a lot of things being discussed. So your technical questions, your project related, your interview questions, that's the forum to be in. Then where do the videos, how to watch these videos, how are they hosted? So let me give a quick overview of a new uh, way I'm building this folder structure. So unlike earlier, I have divided them into two parts. The first part will be the live batch recordings. For example, these sessions that happen, for each batch, there are about 15 to 20 videos that are hosted in one folder each. So you'll be given access to three of the latest uh, few batches plus the ongoing batch. So that's almost about 60 videos by itself. Apart from these, there is one mega folder that's called the topic based recording. 
primarily over a period of time I've collected a series of uh, the whole methodology of how QTP should be learned into these 60 plus videos that's almost about 50 hours so it starts with the basics of VB scripting then it goes to some of the uh, simpler but not regularly used things called actions and checkpoints more importantly functions how do you interact with Excel but then you get into how to create different types of data driven framework either using Excel read write or data tables or arrays and so on then we go into one of the most important topics about descriptive programming how do you work with it uh, we then look at how to manage this descriptive programming or different types of dynamic applications using uh, things like child objects mercury device replay and so on we then talk about how do we work with environment variable variables error handling recovery scenarios and so on after we have done this part and this is the folder structure team I'm telling you how the videos are uh, sorted out you get into keyword driven framework how can we create a very simple one using shared object repository but most importantly how do we create a more complex one using descriptive programming and then we go into hybrid a uh, different type of load and run action framework and the overview Finally, towards end, you will see the other topics like database testing, .NET factory, file system object, how do you work with XML. So there are various things, team. So if someone is looking at end-to-end, -end, I would suggest just take this one folder and watch everything. Towards the end, there will be one folder which will contain what are the typical automation challenges that you face in your real life. How do you prepare for interviews or your project? How do you try and implement them? And a good overview about frameworks. So, Typically, if you watch some of these, at least the core concept of this, you are at a very, very advanced level on this tool. The whole point is to try and make this learning easier. And here is where those videos are hosted. So you'll see different batch videos out here. And now this is the folder. That's the mega folder of QTP recorded topics. You would see all the uh, videos in that order. So once you sort it by name, you can play any video just open it up all you need is a simple plugin called Microsoft Silverlight and you can start to watch those videos alright so uh, you can play them in full screen and you'll see that the quality is almost as good as you're doing it on your own machine alright team so that's a quick overview of what I wanted to give uh, on the what you get with your uh, uh, welcome pack so where was that let's see quickly uh, Tuck, tuck, tuck. I think I'm here line six okay there you go so that's the videos that you will get access to uh, so participants who choose to be in the live sessions you'll also get access to uh, these webinars as they go on but primarily videos is the thing you attend webinars live interact or not because most of your questions will come when you practice and that's where you use the group to interact with all the others all right. You'll also be given how to install QTP versions and how to work with it. There is a technical support team that I'm creating just because there are hundreds of participants joining my training every month now. So I've created, I'm creating a structure of technical supports. So that will be good. So even if you cannot attend the live batch, missing one or two classes or the whole session doesn't matter because everything is recorded and hosted for you to watch. You currently have a 200 day access from the time you subscribe. The only reason I put a timeline there is because you know that you have to try and complete something in a certain period of time. If you need an extension by a month or so, I'm not too stringent about it. But if you want to repeat it, there is a small repeat fee to get it extended for another 200 days. Uh, also, there are offers of QTP and Selenium together. But I would recommend that you don't learn both the tools together. Take one tool, spend about four or five weeks, master it, then move on to the other tool. So. If needed, I'll give you the extension on the videos and all that, so don't worry about that. But to get the offer, you can make a payment together for both of them. For all of this team, just visit either qtpelearn.com or seleniumelearn.com, then you should be good. So that's about the overview that I wanted to give you, team, uh, about the training. Any uh, questions regarding the training and the what comes with it and so on, please contact me offline. But I just want to continue with the core agenda of our today's session. All right, team. So, so far, so good, everyone. Team, all good? All right, cool. So, now, what I'm doing is, as a beginning level, for each of the batches, there are lots of scripts that we generate. We write a lot of code. We develop the whole frameworks and concepts. So, for our 
December 1st batch, I've created a new folder called D1 and you will be given access to all the files that get stored in this folder. All right. For example, the last batch that I just completed, the November 3rd, all the files for that batch are all out here. Okay. How do we go about doing each and everything? Now, in here is where we're going to start with our main topic, the fundamental agenda. So team, one request is whenever you get a chance, do visit my YouTube folder and watch the basic videos on QTP. You'll see QTP tutorial 1, 2 and 3. Go to youtube.com slash QTP eLearn and watch these basic videos. The reason I'm saying is some of the concepts like the record and run, it's not so significant in our real life, all right? But it is important to, to know as a concept, how does it work, why does it work and so on. I will not go at the same depth so that we can directly jump into creating a data driven framework from scratch and that will be our focus. How do we typically go about creating that framework? All right, Tim, just give me one second please. All right, Tim, sorry, I'm back. <clears throat> Just had to grab a glass of water. <clears throat> All right. So now let's start with working with QTP. So to do that, what I'll do is I'll take a pre-built uh, template from an old batch and put it in here. Now we'll start to work. The reason I love to start with the template is very simple. Once I put my thoughts together in a simple Excel, it is very easy for me to then move forward and explain things with you. So what we are doing is, let me talk to you about automation at a high level. But before that, what I want to show you is this application. Let's assume that you are part of a team or you are trying to automate a project which is similar to this. Not necessarily that it is as simple as what you see, but the concepts are the same. The approach is the same. You may just have more functionality, a little more different types of fields and so on. That's the only difference. For example, this is an application that once I show you a simple application, our focus will then be to learning and mastering QTP, VBScript and so on. It's then easy to apply it on more complex applications as we go forward. All right. So the first thing that I want to give you is an overview of the functionality of this application because as automation engineers, forget about automation engineers, as even test engineers, one of our prime focus is the fact that you are masters at understanding the functionality of any application. That is our beginning point. So if you have something in your project, that means that you know in and out of what is correct or and what is wrong. The reason is unless you're a master of the application, how will you know what is working right and what is working wrong? That's the reason you need to know this. And here is a quick overview of what this application does. It's a simple gas mileage calculator. What it does is let's say that a user comes in here and enters that his current order, his or her current odometer reading on his vehicle is about 15,000 miles. And let's say the last one where he measured was 12,000 miles. And then he put in let's say about 35 gallons of fuel during this period from where he started to where he's ending. All right, that's the fuel consumption. And let's say that his gas price was about 4.12. Now, when the user clicks on calculate, the functionality of this simple part of this application is that it must give these values back. All right, so what is it that we have to do as test engineers? We have to do a lot of things. I have to first verify if these fields are there, if the user is able to enter inputs into it, if the user is able to click on calculate and then see if finally the results are coming up and if they're coming up are they correct or not that is the intent and that is the process that we want to automate and test okay but before I get to automation how do we do it manually typically what we will do is we would go to the URL we would start entering details we would perform this operation as a user does of this application and see if it is working or not right once you know if that is working or not, then you can say yes, it is working or no, it is not working. Team, quick pause. Can you all hear me okay at this point? All 
All right, because I just got a pop-up saying my audio quality has uh, degraded on go to training, so I wanted to verify. All right, sounds good. So now, why do we want to automate it? So here is the bottom line of automation team. If I am a manual test engineer, in the sense I am given the uh, project to test this calculated net application. Okay, so what will I do? I will go there. I will take one set of data and test it and see if it is a pass or a fail, right? But what happens is if I test it for one set of data, that means everything is good? No, you will have users who come from different backgrounds. They have different types of readings and they may enter different types of values. So you have to repeat this process and test it for different types of input values. And the more the number of test data this is called your basically your test data. What you're trying to test the application on, the more confidently you can say that this application seems to be working correctly. So you would, with what confidence? I'm a 90% confident. I'm a 99% or a 99.9% .9 confidence. That is the idea. But if I need to do this manually, every time I have to go enter the values, get the output, verify it, and so on, it is a laborious, time-consuming process. Plus added risk that when I'm doing this manually every time there are chances that I make errors and that is the issue. Time's getting wasted, too long to test it out uh, and manual errors can happen. So and bigger thing is every time, not necessarily that we test it out one time and we let it go, right? Because if calculator net, the application is changing the functionality of how it works changes, you have to go back and see if with the new changes, your old functionality is working correctly or not. So you have to repeat everything again and again. That means there are three fundamental criteria for automation. Number one is, is it efficient? If a manual user does something in 10 hours, am I able to cut this down to something lesser than 10 hours? Probably one hour. All right. Is that there? Is it efficient? Okay. Can I reuse it? What do I mean? I don't want to spend 20 hours developing automation scripts and then realize that only once I learned, uh, did it. So what I did is I spent 21 hours in total for what I could have done manually, 10 hours. But I keep on repeating it. 10 into uh, what? 10 times is uh, 100. But now it will be 20 uh, for creating and 10 hours for each one hour run, that's just 30. So that's where your real essence of automation is coming. You're able to reuse it whenever needed. The last and very important thing is it is accurate. Okay. Are the results accurate? What is the point of building efficiency? It's working fast, super fast. Everything is doing good. I can reuse it anytime, but it fails more often than it gives me correct results. What is the point then? You're not able to trust what it's doing. So you have to switch back to manual testing. That is the reason these three are the fundamental driving blocks for any automation. So if you have a question in terms of should I automate this or not, here is the formula for it. If this, each of these are valid, not one of them, everyone should meet its criteria, then only be able to do it. We will look at these things more practically, team, as we move forward, but that's the concept. So now, how do we use this tool called HP Quick Test Professional to do the same process? Primarily, what happens is if I open QTP and I open the application after QTP. So, team, remember to open your IE application after you open QTP, all right? Now, I can go in here and create something called as a new test. This is a simple UI theme, just like any other Windows application, you'll see menu bar and all the other details. All I have to do, do is go to a new test. Either click here or go to your file, go to new and say test. Everything that we do belongs to some tests in QTP. Okay, tests are basically that here is what I want to test. So I can do something, store it for a future use. What does this do? The most important part of this test is something called as your expert view. This is where we are, all right? Here is the white background. So almost like a notepad where you can go and start typing anything, all right? Now, what I could do, typically, predominantly what people have done is that they would go to that website, <coughs> calculator.net, whatever, all right? Go to that URL, hit the record key here, 
and the instruction we are doing when we do this is I am telling QTP, QTP you are an automation tool. You are saying that what I do manually you can automate it but show me how you are doing it. So team, another quick check, sorry about this. Uh, okay, uh, audio is bad. Alright, let me check please. So team, can you hear me now? And is the voice is my voice breaking or do you still hear an echo? Clear? Good. All right. All right. So now we'll, let's continue. So where I paused is that I was explaining about this record process. So the instructions, it is all about giving instructions to QTP. Either you do a record or you start doing something on your own. Okay. When we do record, I'm saying QTP, I don't know how you do things. I don't know what's happening in your mind at the background, but follow what I'm doing and try and replicate that. That's the instruction. So you click on record, click on OK, forget about this set it to the record and run test on any open browser because I already have IE open here. Click on OK. Once you do that, QTP gets into a mode, tries to understand what is happening. So if I go to this field and like earlier, I type 15,000 and hit a tab or go on to the next field, you would see a line of code getting generated. So for everything that we do, QTP understands what we are trying to do. All right. And let's say I put some values out here and then click on calculate. At the end, you would see that the results have come up out here. Okay, so now what QTP has done is it has understood what are the steps I performed. So if I hit on stop, and if you look at what things have been generated, this is your primary VB script code. All right, what is a VB script code? It is just like a translator in between you and QTP as a tool. Okay, so if you are a person who is trying to automate this tool, QTP can only understand one language called VBScript. You now have to learn this VBScript to communicate effectively with QTP. All right, that is the reason VBScript is very essential. When you do a record, QTP generates everything by itself. But is this the way we work in real life? No. Why? Because you have to be in control of what's happening. You have to be able to design logics around things. All right. Basic code generated. So now if I just say save this as, it will save this as a test and I can go and put it into our D1 folder and call this as uh, calc1. Just a version and say this calc1. Now <clears throat> if I run this test team, Okay, go back to the root URL where it initially saw that these are the fields and I run this test, QTP will perform the same operation again and it goes very quickly from each line. So each line tells QTP what to do, how to do. Two important things in this team. There are only two important things in every statement that you see that is related with something with the application. The first one is where does QTP has to do a certain activity and then the second one is what does it have to do? The where part and the what part. Where part is basically saying is it the edit field? Is it the button we need to go and click? Is it the uh, link that I need to click? Do I need to select something from a drop down list in an application and so on? That's the where part. Identifying that element what on which we want to perform something. Then once we've identified where, then I say what to do? Do you want to click? Do you want to select? Do you want to enter a text? Do you want to verify some values? That is the what part. Okay. Your where part team is basically all about the objects and object repositories. All right. Now, how do we typically do the same process instead of doing it through this record and run? What is the other way? The other way is to develop it in a systematic manner using a framework concept. Okay, and here is my data driven framework plan. All right, my plan is basically what is it that I wish to achieve? How will I go about doing it in a systematic manner instead of using a record and run? The way we will do it is, is this the only steps, always the same steps irrespective of the project or what our requirement is? No, but this is an approach, one of the approaches that you should take. Then you can customize it. So the first thing out here is I've listed all these things. Okay, now I'm saying 
first let's identify what is it that we want to do how do we want to test something and what is our scenario so for that we have to create something called as a plan what are the steps that we perform manually which application browser version and so on okay high level test plan then what is the scenario the scenario is we going into that application and entering these values clicking on calculate then we have to verify them that's our overall process the third one is called test data all right but we learned early on that unless we repeat the same things for multiple sets of data, I cannot with confidence say that this application works correctly. So how can I do that? You prepare a sample set of test data. Say, what is your starting miles? What is What are your end miles? What are the inputs that we will take out here? Okay, these are my inputs. So let me color this with a different... Uh, background here are my inputs and at the end I want the outputs to come here and say what were the miles per gallon that the application gave and is that a correct value then result is a pass or a fail okay manually I can go take each input put it there get the values compare it using a windows calculator or a handheld one and say pass or a fail but that's the reason we are moving away from it because of ERA efficiency reusability and your accuracy all right so to do this I have prepared a test data saying that here's my sample test data now that is your first step and we've done about 75 percent why 75 why not 100 you might want to come back and update some more things here you might want to change something in your logic okay those things you can never say 100 percent until you get there but at least you know 75 percent is a good mark the second thing is uh, do we answering that where part how does QTP answer this where part? When we did a record, QTP does something. It learns all about the objects. Okay, Objects are nothing but what does QTP look at in that? Is it a browser? Is it a page? Is that a button? Is that a link? Or what? What is that object? Once it knows what that object is, it learns something about that object. Okay, so it gives it something called as a logical name. We will see that very soon. And then it says that I have identified this object. There are identifications. Like you identify, uh, let's say, uh, an individual by an email address or a cell phone number or a social security number. What does QTP use to identify? That is number one. Then we can get to the what part. Once I've identified it, what do we want to do? And those are called as our methods. All right. Objects have a class that they belong to, which is basically saying what type of an object is it? Is it a browser? Is it a car? Is it a cell phone? Is it a human? What is it? And then in that, I can say what next? What next? What is the object within it? Within a car, I have an engine, I have the seats and so on. So that's the concept of hierarchy. There is nothing at all to be confused on these topics, team. Okay? Very simple. But anytime anyone hears these things for the first time, they always have questions. What does it mean? But let's explore them practically. That's the way you're going to master things. Okay? So QTP has done this. Now I'm saying as part of a regular plan of automation, we will do the same thing. How? Let's save this old one. Forget it. Now I'll create a new test. Blank. Okay? So to do that, what I need to use is something called as your object repository. I briefly spoke about object, but if I teach QTP that here is my where part, here are the objects, how do you want to identify and store them somewhere? Just write down notes. Okay, here is the name I'll give to this object. Here is the class. Uh, here are the properties so that I can identify it. That's where all this is stored in a place called as the repository. That's your object repository. Click on this icon and it will open up something called as your object repository. All right. Here is where when we do a regular record, QTP does two things. Adds the object to the repository, writes the code corresponding to what we did. All right. Now, let's go in here and see what are these objects. Here is my application. What are the objects team? Where are we trying to do something? We are trying to do something here. Here is the first where, second where, third where, fourth where, fifth where. Once we click on calculate, then we come to results. That we will look at it a little later. But here are the five objects that I want. I will add them to the repository. How? I can do a record, but no. In real life, I would love to add them myself. Why? I'll show you. So how do you first add them? Click on this add objects to repository button out here. Do you see this?
the uh, cube icon with a plus that is the icon to add your objects click on it your mouse pointer will change to being a hand but if you don't have the application in front of you you click something it will try and add that Excel object as a Windows object and so on cancel this minimize all your windows bring up your application then bring up your QTP now try and do the same process click on add objects the only thing that is open then is my application all right so minimize all the windows open QTP or open the application open QTP and then add the objects now let's click on the object once I click on it QTP will tell me that hey I found a browser inside the browser there is a web page and there inside that there's a web table and another web table and then inside it web that's the hierarchy of how it is identified okay it is telling that basically <clears throat> to identify where you are I have to give the uh, apartment number I have to give the street uh, name number I have to give the city code I have to give the zip code this uh, state the country the continent everything but sometimes do I need to give everything if I say US and then I say Los Angeles I know it's automatically there in California I don't have to give the state correct and if I say US and I say the zip code that is fine too but I still have to give the door number in apartment number. so some of these will not get added it will eliminate because I don't need to know the complete hierarchy so when you click on OK see what happens it adds it to something called as a browser how do we know this is a browser object because once you click on it you will see the class here and that's exactly what we saw when we did the first test let's open the first test uh, through the Windows Explorer if you want to see the code that we generated click on that folder go to action one right click on the script.mts file and say open with a notepad and then you see the exact code that got generated there are other things that get generated at the end of it you can ignore them <clears throat> but here was the main first step what does it show browser and then some information here page some information here web edit some information here right so that's exactly how it's stored here browser the name here page the name here then there's a web edit the name here okay if someone wants to look at this code and understand what is happening is US COD reading what is this COD reading something QTP learned to identify that object and it stored that as a name okay it's like saying that uh, I will identify one of my participants in the session uh, by saying uh, you know what's your city which city are you in but that doesn't mean that I know you exactly but if I use your first or last name or your telephone or email then I'm uniquely pointing out to you correct so that's how I will say the names of these objects can be tricky once you add them unlike recording when you add it you have the direct ability to go and change it as and when so I can say out here that this is my end miles that is the name I give to that edit field this field out here team is a edit field because you can go in and type some information and these are called as web edits that is the class it belongs to how do you master them just continue to do what I'm showing over the next period of 10 sessions 15 sessions you'll automatically master the simple concepts beginning is a step but then it becomes clearer as we go along okay so now I'm saying it is end miles now hit a tab or come out of it and then that is stored there all right how does QTP identify it using these description properties out here this portion is a must to learn but we will come to this at a later point we have to go very very deep into it for now all I'm interested in is the name of these objects and the hierarchy in which it's getting added all right so for now forget about how it's identified let's assume that it is identified I am interested in the names for now and what class they belong to okay one object added now let's take click on plus and add the second one and same similar hierarchy but it's got a different name that it is automatically allocated that's called the logical name that QTP generates and we will change that to something that we feel more comfortable with why so that someone reading through the code in your team is able to easily see what is happening what is this line doing 
when we write the code, you will see how easy it is to recognize that compared to looking at this piece of code. Then we can see the advantages. Team, am I making sense? Is everyone comfortable with what we are doing so far? Chalni, we are not coming to descriptive programming yet. We will come to it very, very aggressively. A whole keyword-driven framework will be developed around it using absolute descriptive programming. We will come to that later, not today. Let your questions be related with what we have done so far in the training team. That way, it is easy for us to go together. Uh, let me see another question. For some reason, I'm not getting code generated. Only thing gets generated is window open, window activate. The reason, Namrata, is that your QTP is a software tool that is installed on your system. Your system has security settings. It has a specific operating system and so on. You have to tweak the settings so that you give control to QTP that QTP, now you can perform some high-risk activities on different things on your machine. So those things, as part of that welcome pack, as I mentioned, you will get that access uh, specifically as to how to install and so on. All those installation instructions will be sent out there. So team, comfortable so far? <clears throat> Brahma, again, uh, we are not going into that portion. My focus is on what we are doing. Anything significant uh, other than this, please come back later. What is the significance of keyword view? Nothing. Zilt. It is useless thing. Why? Okay, Tima, let me give you a very fundamental, most important thing about this thing. There are two ways of this tool. 90% of the QTP population knows two things or three few things. They know, let me close this something called as a keyword view, they know something called as actions, they know something called as checkpoints, and they know something called as record and run. All right? If you go and put these on your resume and say that you're strong at this, you're one among that 95% of the population or 90% of QTP population. QTP population worldwide, not everyone who's there in those projects. Okay, if you want to get to that cream, get away from actions, get away from checkpoints, get away from record, get away from this useless keyword view. Why? You have to know VBScript, descriptive programming, and frameworks. All right, cool. So, team, continuing in the same direction of how we were adding, hey, this is fine, but how about naming these things also? What is this? Ah, browser. Uh, okay, let's name this as IE because that seems to be the browser we're using. Okay. How about this? This seems to be the page. Oh, okay, the web page. So how about saying this uh, page one? What if I get more pages? Then what will happen? So I'll say this is page one. All right. What was this end miles? Hmm. What was this pointing to? We added the object, but I now I don't remember. So let's say click highlight an application and show you a blinking icon on that object. The same with start mile, say highlight an application, it will blink on that object. Now I have two more, three more objects left, let's add them quickly. Click on this and say OK, now go and change it. What was it? Gas. So I'll just say this is gas. Alright, now let's add one more, which is that price, gas price. So I'll call this as price. I am giving names that is easy for me and my team to look at when they read the code. That is the intent. Even when I come back a couple of months down the line, if I want to understand what is happening in my code, that's the reason it is important. When you develop these scripts, you're not doing it for one time. Now I have something called as uh, image calculate. Why? This thing out here, QTP has identified that is not actually a button. It is an image. So if you right click, you can say this save picture as and so on. That's an image. Depending on what that object is, QTP identifies it different, gives it a specific class name and writes the name. Have we mastered this as aspect of classes, objects, identification and methods? No. We are getting there now. Now what I did team, those five significant objects that I need I have added them to my repository. So I'll say about 50% done. Why? I may need more objects as we go along. Okay. What we did is we've identified them and we added the objects to the repository and assigned logical names. Logic names that QTP gives automatically to these objects are called as logical names. We go and change them to something which is more logical to us. Will QTP recognize? Now we'll see that. 
So we have also done this part. We, in fact, identification we have identified, but we have added only some of those objects. Now we're saying let's write the basic code for the test scenario. But before I write the code, let me think about what is it that I want to do. Let's write it here. I'll say enter the values into the application for the four edit fields. Pure English, simple for us to understand. Next, I will say click on the calculate button. Easy for us to understand. Then uh, verify if results are coming up. Good. Verify if the result is correct. All right. These are the main steps team that I need to perform. So how do we write the code for this? Like UTP generated it automatically. How do we write our own code? Now it gets very simple and very interesting. The first thing we need to do is let's save this test because we're making changes. Keep saving it. Otherwise, this tool can crash like any other application and you may lose changes. So I'm saving it as calc2 and click save. But as soon as I'm trying to save, QTP gives me an information tab here and says, hey, there's some problem. It gives me a red exclamation and says there's some problem. These are basically syntax error. Syntax error is basically you want to communicate with QTP. And I said that there is a middle layer out here called VB script. So if I want to speak directly in English to QTP, it won't understand. I have to give it as VB script statements. So for each of these, I need to write code. But then how do we take care of this? I want to keep them, but I don't want QTP to uh, not, you know, start to understand them as uh, VB script. So for your comments, which is your notes, all you have to do is select the line, either go to that line and click on this icon or say control M and that whole sentence will be treated as something which is not a VB script statement for QTP. Don't worry about that statement. It is for my own understanding. See how many times am I saying this word? The way we develop this is a lot to do with how will I understand or read this code or my team will understand or we, when we get to maintenance after a couple of months, how can we go back and easily identify what we do? That is the reason. Once I comment them using Control M as a keyboard shortcut or using this, they're no longer executable. Now can I save it? Let's click on save. Now I don't get that information error anymore because QTP has identified. So the first thing, how can I comment the whole block at a time? Just enter, let's say this is the text that you want to enter, okay? Just select everything that you want using your Shift and your arrow key. Hit Control M, Control Shift M to uncomment use these two icons to do the same all right how do you master it do it of three or four times you'll automatically learn to do it so team everything good so far shall we go ahead with this now how do we enter values i'm saying first the where part then the what part how do we do this to do the where part i will keep my object repository to one side Okay, this is where I said what are the names for the objects and how they're identified. Okay, now let's see where this is. I want end miles. So I'll say web edit, right? Web edit and end miles. So I'll start to write. This is a comment again. So control M. I'll say web edit and I will say end miles. But for QTP to understand this statement, it will try and search for something like this in the test objects. If it has to do that, it has to start from the root, the main parent object and then go to what is under that and then what is under that and that way only it's identifying. So to do this, instead of writing it this way, I will start with this first object that I see. What do you see? Browser. So I'll write browser. As soon as you hit op the open brackets, IE automatically comes up. Why? Because QTP found that there's only one object which is of type browser. How can you see that? You can see class browser. You can see this icon out here. Do you see any other icon with this anywhere down? No. It has got only one browser and it has identified that. What is the class name and what is the name of that specific object in the repository? Okay. Class name, 
name of the object. For example, now I don't need this, right? If I <coughs> change this IE to IE1, all right, you will notice that your automatically your code that you generate out here will change automatically. All right, we will come to this correlation once we uh, write the whole statements. Okay, now I will say inside this browser called IE dot tells me that what do I want to do? All this brick icon steam, the green brick with the motion sign that you see is basically saying you're performing something, you're throwing something, you're doing something, and that tells me. On browser, these are the various things I can perform. And as you go on each of them, it will show you what. Do you have to master everything? No. But you have to be aware that there are some things that you could do. Okay? There are some things that you could do. How do you master them? As we continue to use some of these features, as you build that expertise, you will be able to do it automatically. <coughs> Now team, what I want to do is, hey, I don't want to perform anything on this. I want to go to the next one called page. So to do that, all I will do is dot start typing page and you'll see that page is automatically here. Either you select this or you write the whole code. Now you open brackets again. And now page one comes up automatically. Why? Like browser IE, only one object of the type page in here. And that's why that comes up. Now I can close that bracket. Dot. What is next? I want web edit. This is a web edit field. <clears throat> and here's the name. So let's start to write web edit. Okay. Open brackets. Now why do I see four items here? <clears throat> Sorry, Tim. Why didn't it pick up one automatically? Reason being, it sees four objects of the same type. That is the reason. Now let's start with end miles. Okay, here is the one. So I'm going to double click on that and dot. Now I said this is the where part. This is the where part for my code. So now what do I want to do? I want to enter text in here. So is there a method called enter text? Do I see enter anywhere? Uh, no. What will submit do? Submits a form, mm, not this. How about two string? Doesn't seem to be the right thing. What is the set? Sets the text inside the edit box. Is this the one? Do I have to every time go through everything and see what each of them does? No. Now you know set does what? Right? Next time when you want to do it, you will learn it automatically. So as you learn each and everything, you get to that mastering of that portion. Okay? Now team, once I say set, it tells me that set in this small uh, uh, Im image or I text whatever is being shown here and it says text. Now it tells me that I have to provide text. Okay, the where part is good, the what part is good, but what do you want to put inside that? The value for that, that is what I have to give and I'm going to say this is 15,000. Alright team, this is very similar to what you would have seen out here. The only difference between these two statements is I have a very large statement out here which does exactly the same thing like the one that I see out here. Okay, my object names are more meaningful. I'm writing the code and I'm practicing to master to write PB script and going forward in that direction. Now that this is done, cool. Now let's try and do the other one a little bit faster. Browser IE cool dot page page one dot again web edit because I have to enter into four fields. Now start miles. Where did we start? Select that dot which one we just used one, correct? Set. And let's say we put ten thousand in this. Similarly, I'm doing Hey, why should I type the whole thing over and over again? This is common, so I'll copy this. Actually, it till here, this seems to be common. So let's copy this. And now, open brackets. I can enter, select gas, dot, set again, and say, uh, what do I want to put into it? <coughs> let's say 40 gallons, the amount of gas. Again, we made it. The last one, price, dot, set and say 4.5 dollars per gallon. Finally, the same thing again, 
uh, why can't I see calculate? Mm. Why don't I see calculate team? I see calculate here, but why not here? Hmm, what could be wrong? And that's where you have to identify team and look more closely. Why? Because what is it showing me? All green buttons. Why? Because this is web edit. Then what is my calculate? It is an image. Ah, okay. So I will write web image and open brackets. Do I see anything? Hmm, no. Why? It is not a web image. Look at the exact thing. It is an image. So delete this and start to write image. Now open brackets. Calculate comes up automatically because the only one. Dot set. I want to write set. Why am I getting set to set? I don't see set here. Why? If it is an image, do you think a user can go and enter a text here? No. What do I do then? What will the user typically do? Click on an image, correct? That is what user can do using a keyboard and a mouse on any image. That's the only thing. Click or right click or something like that. Then is there something called as dot click? Hey, there you go. It says clicks the object. So depending on the type of object, what you can do, or rather the technical term called method changes depending on the type. It's a browser, page, web edit, image, and so on. Now, like the others, it is telling me uh, something called as in for integer, which will come to. Then it says optional. Then it says X and then again under optional and Y and optional and button. What is this? When it says optional, you don't need to provide. These are basically additional inputs which can tell QTP that, hey, do I want to click here in the button? Do I want to click here? Do I want to click here? Do I want to right click? Do I want to left click? Do I want to do a middle click? What is it that I want to perform? That's what it is here. Right now, it is just a basic click. So nothing is needed. Now, what I did team is I generated hopefully the code. So everything good? Is it correct? All good? All works well? Can I be sure? Not until you test your code. Write a small piece of code. See if it works correctly. Then repeat it. Now let's save this and hit on the run key. What it is doing? I am telling QTP that here is the information that we provided. Now let's execute it. Let's see what happens. Whenever QTP takes time, there is some problem out here. There is some problem team. That's basically is telling QTP that I'm trying to do something I'm not able to do. It's still running, as you see at the right bottom in the green, and on line 4 I see a yellow icon. But it is not moving from there. Why is it not moving? What could be the reason? How long will it wait before it gives out a timeout? <clears throat> and these times are also set within us. It is not an team you have to explore. You have to really try and get into it and say, yeah, this could be the reason or this could be the reason and so on. All right? That intense of how, where it could be going wrong is important. But now we will get one of our most important uh, lessons of learning QTP. The error messages, hopefully it should come up ideally in 60 seconds. Uh, let's see how long it takes. If it doesn't come up, I know the cause of it, but I want it to come up and tell me what is the reason. It is trying and trying and trying. How much more time will it take before it throws an error? Exactly. I know. Uh, yes, you're right. Manjusha. Hasn't it been more than 60 seconds? Hmm. Shouldn't take this long. But you know, QTP is just like any other software, uh, so it can fail uh, when we try and do something. But the problem is QTP is trying to execute this code and it's still failing. Why is this failing? In this case, I know the reason. But tomorrow when we come, I want to show errors and tell you how to be able to solve them. The problem is QTP is trying to perform this browser page and run that. The first thing it does, it goes and checks to see if that is present in the object repository. Do you see a browser with the name IE here? Yes, good. In that, do you see a page one? Yes, good. Do I see a web edit called end miles? Yes, good. All this is good. Then it will try and go and find that in the application. Where is my application? Let's minimize everything. Let's bring up QTP back. 
where is my application? My IE is not open. So QTP is trying to do something and my IE is not open. There you go, finally. Here is the message team and this is the most important aspect of your learning team. How do you identify this issue? How do you know what is going wrong and try and solve that? Mastering this feature is a very, very must needed thing. All right. So team, I'm not going to go further because I'm already at 7.31. I uh, want to stop the session today. Let me leave it out here. I'm going to stop this, save this test and keep it aside so that when we start tomorrow, we will try and start from here. Team, any questions please? BB script is not case sensitive and I'll explain this again uh, Kotari tomorrow but basically it's a, what it means is if I read browser with a cap or browser with a small doesn't matter but as you go along you will notice or like set with the caps or set with a small doesn't matter but as you go along you will start using so many things that in certain areas especially names of objects or variables and so on it becomes case sensitive then it become a problem so treat it like it is case sensitive then you have no issue does this course cover SQL? No, it doesn't cover SQL. Okay, SQL is not covered. I'll give you the basics of how databases work, how, what you can do to work with databases, but more importantly, how can you access uh, this uh, databases from your uh, using database testing concept using QTP. Okay, that's there as part of the videos that you find, uh, but no, I don't cover SQL. Rajib, you have to send an email, please. If you send an email about all those requests, you will get a response within 24 hours with what you need. Do we need to learn SQL? SQL is a very, very important thing for anyone in the IT industry. There are two things very important in HTML and SQL. For that, just go to w3schools.com. Very, very popular old website that has good tutorials. Go here. Just pick up that you want to learn SQL out here. Click on this. Go through those few simple tutorials. That's all you need. All right. Any good books on QTP? There are no good books on QTP, honestly, because there are bo good books on QTP recording checkpoints, actions, and so on. There's nothing which really talks about VB scripting, frameworks, and all of these things at length. So you don't need any good books. Uh, so anything regarding team, the uh, QTP software, the training aspects or something that is not related with what we did today, please keep it for offline. That's a better place to handle it. You can send an email and one of my team members will respond back within 24 hours to you. <clears throat> Nipindra, Selenium or QTP is a good question. Uh, there are lots of factors into which one to choose. Send an email. Uh, I will send you some information that will help you to decide. Team, any other questions with what we did today? Because I can start the next session uh, with where we left off and then we can go on. Raji, put your other question here. What is the other question? Let's see. I have to go back and hunt through those questions and find out. What is that question? I don't know. Raji, put that question again, please. Why can't we use just the logical names to reference the objects since the names we have given are unique? Why do we need to reference it from the prevalent browser? No. But you're referencing them. I'll, I'll explain this, Rajiv. Keep this question for tomorrow when we start. Once we get into the more of the correlation between the steps and this uh, objects here, then it becomes easy. When is the next class? Uh, uh, I, I mean, next batch, Manjusha, every month. So please contact me offline on that. I'm, I'm working on QTP 10 because that's the one which will be more comfortable for you to practice. Not too many differences in QTP 10 and 11. Web service testing is not part of this, Shanti. Uh, okay, let's see. All right. I think most of the questions are answered. Thank you so much, team. Sorry it took a little bit longer, but hope this could give you a quick overview about uh, QTP as a tool. So we will continue with uh, day two. Team, are we all okay to do day two tomorrow? That's Friday. So that I can complete the basics of things and then move on uh, to some more advanced things next week. I want to try and complete this whole batch before our Christmas vacation start. Uh, so that then, you know, Christmas, New Year, we don't have anything much to do around this thing. All right, Tim, so we will have a session tomorrow then. I will send an updated GoToMeeting invite. It's the same link for every session going forward. You can attend tomorrow's session uh, using the same one. All right. 
thank you everyone will uh, upload host this video at some place and give you access then you can have a look at it take care everyone thank you bye for now